Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Just bear with me a second while I get ready. Oh, there's somebody in there quick and ready. Who's watching me? Good afternoon, Debbie and Bronwyn. Gee, you girls are on the ball. How are you? All right, so welcome back this afternoon. I am going to, I thought I would do a, um, a bit of a painty project, having a play with some acrylic paints and stencils and a few of the scrap effects stamps as well that are on special for today only. So, hey Sharon from New Zealand. Um, so I thought that I would do a, a canvas that I will put this finished project in with one lucky order. And I'm not gonna tell you who it is, I'm just gonna put it in with an order. So um, I thought that it would be a good idea to give a little bit more back to you guys. And instead of hoarding all the projects here, because that's the thing, um, I would gift them to you. So I want to talk today about acrylic paints and stencils and the foam stamps from Scrap Effects and how to use them. But before I do that, what I would like to do is, I've got a canvas here and I think it's like a 14 by 14 canvas. It is a big canvas. It's not a small canvas at all. Uh, but I want to just pop a little bit of color in the background just to lay down a bit of a base before I start. So as you can see, I put down some yellow earlier and let that dry. The The reason I started with yellow is because it's quite a, a neutral colour and it kind of sits in the middle of the colour wheel and it, I can layer almost any colour on top of it. What I'm going to do is build up my base and Put a few different colors down so i'm working with dina wakeley paints and dilutions paints i had a restock of these paints in did they come yesterday something like that yesterday uh so i have got plenty in stock uh, i'm also using the really big fat dina wakeley brush and putting that paint on so what i'm doing is i'm going to completely cover this background and make sure that I'm, I've got complete coverage here. I'm also making sure that I'm not mixing colors that don't go together. So I'm making sure that there are no uh, colors that are not alongside each other on the color wheel so that I don't make mud, okay? And if I do use a color like something that's not going to uh, go together, it is going to Grab me a tag, Louise, and I'll write that out. It'll muddy out, muddy up, and I don't want it to be all muddy. Tags are over next to the chocolates. So I'm gonna pop an orange on here. Sorry, guys, just multitasking away as we do. Pop a little orange, but I've, this is pretty much dry, the green that I put down, so I know that that orange is not gonna to get too muddy, and it's gonna go into the background anyway. Sorry, multitasking. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, okay, so you can see that I'm just getting that down and it's I'm dry brushing. I'm not washing my brush in between. I'm keeping it nice and dry. And the reason I'm doing this is so that there's no water going onto my, my project. I don't want water. If I put water on, it's going to take too long to dry and nobody's got time for that. Well, I know I don't anyway. 
So uh, I'm gonna pop a little bit of pink around the place to give it a bit of a pop. And then I'm gonna work with some stencils and get on some patterns. So um, today only, you will get 15% off of stencils online. So that is all brands of stencils with the exception of the Natalie May scrapbooking brand. Uh, the reason they're not on special is because they are already at their lowest possible price for you. All right, so that isn't going to take long to dry and I'm just going to put my paintbrush, wrap a baby wipe around it because I haven't decided if I'm finished with that yet. Um, all right, so that is kind of what I've got. It's not super wet. It's really very, very dry. So I've pulled out a whole heap of my Stencil Girl stencils here and I am gonna start building my background using various colors and I'm going to be using a Montmartre tear-off pad. These are fantastic. These are really, really handy because it's like having a, a paint palette in the background. Hey, Sandra. Um, so these are, I think I've got them online for about five or six dollars. They're very, very inexpensive and they they are really quite, they're super easy to use. So what I want to do is I'm just going to start with this stencil here. So this is one of the Stencil Girl stencils. I have no idea what it is called. Um, everything underneath is pretty much dry. So I'm going to start with, look, I'm not going to think about it too much. I have grabbed a teal colour and I'm going to sponge it on. So I'm using a blending tool um, and I'm just going to start dabbing on a little bit of colour. I'm not going to think too much about it. I just want to layer up over the top in a few different areas around my page. So around my canvas. So then this way, what's going to happen is it's creating these really lovely marks that are blending into the background and nowhere near enough paint. I quite know what I was thinking there. So I've just got a sponge on here and I'll use this sponge again and again with lots of different colours, uh, lots of different shades of blues. I won't worry about chopping and changing it over as I go. So you can see what is going on. So this is a great project to do in your art journal or on a card front or uh, on a scrapbook page. It's a super easy technique. It is not at all difficult at, to do and it shouldn't be difficult. The key to making it work is making sure that your paint is dry. Um, I will not be washing my stencils in between um, do I need to wash my, if, okay, if I need to wash one of these sponges, do I need to wash one of these sponges, Rebecca's asking, I need to wash it if I'm using it with acrylic paint, uh, or it will go dry and crunchy, which some of them that I've got here actually are, but I do just usually drop them in a glass of water and, uh, and make that work that way, so, um, now I'm also going to use my catalyst tool to get a bit more of this color on and I'm just going to swipe in a vertical motion like that just to get a bit more of a punch. So the difference between the Dina Wakeley paints and the Dilutions paints is really quite evident because it, the, the Dilutions paints are a little thinner for me. I find that. So um, I'm now going to use a baby wipe and just dab off some of that colour. So a damp baby wipe has created a new pattern in the same design, but in reverse. Like that. And then I'm just using a dirty stencil to create a new pattern over here. Okay, so we are off and running. So I'm not going to worry about washing my stencil. I am not that phased about it because I'm using acrylic paint. Hey, Christine, how are you? All right, so now I'm going to go in with some magenta. 
and I'll be a bit more generous with my paint this time. So this is a Dina Wakeley paint and this is a lot more heavy bodied than some of the, some one of the other ones that I used. So I'm going to bring out the good old scribble scratch handwriting stencil. Uh, this one is a tried and true favourite of mine and I'm going to use a sponge. So I'm going to get a new sponge and it's a stained sponge but it's one that I've cleaned off and I'm just going to dab that colour around the place. So the sponges can soak up a, a lot of the colour. So you do a lot of the paint, so you do need to be a bit generous with your sponge. And you can see that I'm kind of thinning it out a bit rather than just putting the whole lot on my sponge. Um, the colour is going on and I'm connecting it to the edge of my canvas and I'm overlapping a small amount onto stenciling that I have already done. Okay, so I do it like that because you need to tie it all together rather than having all of these bits just floating around the page. And I'm not putting it on super thick because I don't want it to take forever to dry. But I do have a heat tool here that I can dry it off if I need to. All right, so you can kind of see what's happening. I'm starting to build layers of, of colour and lightly overlapping where I've been over the colours underneath and you're getting these really nice pops of colour. So because I'm working with acrylic paint, while it is wet, you can, uh, you'll mix it, the colours will mix together. But dry colours, when you lay them over the top, will actually sit nicely on top of each other because it is, uh, because it's dry underneath, okay? <laughs> Might pop a bit more up here. that aside and again using my catalyst tool but I'm using the edge of it using the back of the tool to to spread on some color so this is just all about layering it's not about the finished project at no point can I see a finishing line I know that this is just my undercoat it's just the background just building a, a background. So my orange is still there, my yellow is still there, the green is still there, but it is disappearing into the background and becoming a layer. So this bit here, I want to pop a little stenciling over the top, so I'm going to use my baby wipe just to polish a little paint off and polish a little bit more off here like so and that works for me so i'm going to pop that stencil aside just quickly hit some of this wet paint with a heat tool hey tony and emma how are you emma i've still got those stencils sitting here for you sweetheart We we'll need to get onto that. I keep forgetting about it. So just just hitting it with the heat gun takes a small amount of the wetness out of it, and then you can work with that. Um, so this colour that I'm using next is wisteria. Oh, sorry, periwinkle blue, and it's going to be a bit more of a pop on the page. Oh. Gorgeous. I love this colour. I hate purple. Everyone knows how much I hate purple, but I can tell you this colour I kind of like. So I'm going to use my dirty sponge. I'm just going to go with that. Now, so far, the patterns that I have chosen are a combination of kind of like a bit of a grid and then something a little bit scripty. So I don't really want to get away too much from that pattern. So I'm going to use my building stencil because it is, it's squares. 
and I want to put some of these marks on now. Um, one of my favourite well-used stencils and it puts out a beautiful pattern that is just geometric and it's everything that I love in stencil. So now I'm just rubbing a little bit out with my finger because I put way too much paint on and bam. No, look, I just can't. I'm one of those people that just can't get purple to work on a project and I'm okay. Um, you're a collector of stencils, are you, Nari? I get that. Um, I also may or may not be a collector of stencils, but there's no judgment here, remember? So just by rubbing my finger over it, just takes that wetness off. Um, hey again, Tammy. Welcome back, darling. So you can see that pop that this, this not purple is giving me. Um, I don't want to call it purple. What do we say it's called? Periwinkle blue. Um, so Louise and I have been picking orders this afternoon and I have got to say, you guys are ordering the coolest things and I cannot wait to see all of the amazing creations that you guys are doing. So if you would like to share some of the creations, that you are making, which I would normally probably never get to see, and I would love to see. Um, search for a group on Facebook called Classes with Natalie May, and that is where I would love to see your, you share your creations. Um, it used to be where I used to advertise my, my private classes uh, for my local ladies, but I would love for you to share some of your creations on there. It's really important to share our different um, our different bits and pieces. So, all right, so that's using the building stencil from Stencil Girl and just that, see how much of a difference that purple made? That non-purple, sorry, that wisteria. Kind of love that. All right, what else have we got? We've got a tangle of stencils off to the side here. That is what we will call it. And this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna swear, I am not gonna swear. I'm going to calmly untangle the stencils. Crying out loud. Sorry, hit the camera. I haven't thrown it at you yet, Louise, so no, you're on the right track. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, all right, so there's a couple of things that I want to do. I'm not going to lose that stencil. Uh, I thought about putting this one on, but these lines go all the wrong ways. I've gone in with a bold print in, in a very vertical Pass my drink, please. In a very vertical fashion. So I really don't want to make it too hard on the eyes by by changing the direction. So what I'm going to do is put that one aside and go for some words. <laughs> cool. I'll come back to that one actually because that's a good stencil. So I'm going to go with this guy here. So this is the, I can't remember what it's called, actually. So we're not going to go for a name on that one. I'm going to put in some lapis, which is a Dina Wakeley paint. And I'm going to go with a little bit of this one. Go back to my, because it's quite a bold blue, but... Or do I want to go? No. Nah. Changed my mind. I'm a woman. I'm entitled to do that. So this one is called... Actually, I'm not too sure what this one's called. But it's a cool one. Alright, but it's quite bold. So, I've gone with a bold blue. You can see that the stencil covers a lot of area. And I have to connect this blue to an edge. 
I'm also coming in with my baby wipe and I'm just going to lighten it up a bit because it's a lot. So I need to make sure that it doesn't stand out too much, but it needs to be connected to some of the darker colors <coughs> on the page, okay, on the project. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So the different brand stencils that are on special at the moment, uh, you'll find Stencil Girl, you will find Carabelle Studios, Carabelle Designs. You'll also find a lovely range of Paper Rose. You will find Vicky Booten came in yesterday. Um, and just to give you a little bit of an idea, how much did that Vicky Booten stencil come down to, Louise, for that three pack? Ten bucks. Under $10. Um, nine something. Nine dollars something for a three pack of Vicky Booten's stencils. So that's not bad value, if I do say so myself, because we even looked at it and went, man, have I priced these right? Um, so they're on special until the end of today. What else is there? Um, oh, there's a few Crafters Workshop stencils as well on special. Um, Christmas stencils. Lots of Christmas stencils available as well for those people who like to get a bit arty farty with their Christmas items um, okay so you can see what I'm doing here this blue is quite bold so I'm not applying paint every time I'm using a dirty sponge a dirty sponge can be a friend and connecting it to a, an edge is also important I'm gonna come in with a different color blue so this is the London Blue, which is a Dilusions paint. And again, just a little on my sponge and then I almost take it off again. But it just is gonna add a little bit of blue shading over the top here. So it's just acrylic paint. Your hands will come clean again. But it's adding a really lovely layer. To the project back with the dirty baby wipe awesome oh, now the dog's having another barking fit they are the most disobedient bloody animals sorry guys all right there we go so you can see what's happening we're layering up that color really nicely and it's not too overpowering yet. That blue is quite strong, but I don't want it to take over the whole project. At this point, I can look at it and put a little bit more paint on my palette knife and add a bit of dimension that way. So for those of you who have just tuned in, the arty canvas that I'm making at the moment is just using acrylic paint and stencils. And this is a, a technique that you can do in a art journal. You can do it on a scrapbook page. You can do it on a chest of drawers. It's super easy to do. Um, this canvas that I'm creating here, <laughs> this canvas that I'm creating is actually going to be popped in with one customer's lucky order okay so I'm going to pay it forward and gift this to you guys um, because that's how I roll okay so a bit of pink now I'm gonna go in with a bit of a darker pink and I've just put a few swipes of color around and I'm just gonna dry those off It's acrylic paint and it's not super thick, so, um, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to take forever to dry before I finish my stenciling. Uh, this time I'm going to go with, what did I say? A bit of pink. A bit more of a darker, deeper pink would be good. So let's have a look here. I've got Funky Fuchsia, Bubblegum Pink. I might go for a combination of Dina Wakeley's Fuchsia and the Dilusions Fuchsia. So 
on my palette I could either wipe that off hey Colleen oh thank you for your kind words you can come back anytime there we go um, so I've got two different shades of the darker pink here what I would like to do with that is I want to add a few more bold prints so I've got one of the crazy quilts stencils this is a great stencil because it has got all of this awesome pattern on it so using exactly the same tools that I had before that's not super purple we'll go with that I'm going to put this these designs on so this designs I'm going to keep just a few little patterns around the place and I'm connecting them to my edges and it's really important that you connect a new pattern to the edges you don't want it floating around in the middle um, not being connected to anything and I'm just spreading it a little out with my fingers to speed up the drying time So the stencils and stamps are only on special until the end of today, until I go to bed tonight. So that could be any time from now, <laughs> now until probably 10.30, 11 o'clock. I should be going to bed earlier because tomorrow there will be a new special. And tomorrow's special is a pretty damn good one. And you're going to want to come back for that. Wow, okay, this one's covered a lot of area. So I'm just going to spread that out with a damp baby wipe. Oh, hey, not so bold, not so scary. And that's the advantage of using acrylic paint on acrylic paint. When it does become super scary, you can just wipe it out. So if I'm wanting to put the colour in the middle, I need to bring it across or bring it down or have it over the top of a similar colour. So for me to put this hot pink straight into the middle again, I need to have it over the top of another pink. So I'm thinking, you know what, that will do about there. Or I need to be able to blend it out so it doesn't just float in the middle. All right. Bit of dirty sponge on the edges. Now, something that this um, canvas is lacking at the moment uh, is dimension, and dimension will come in black and white. And that is where it will all start to take shape and come in together so what I love about this stencil is I've put all of those cool patterns on just off of one stencil so that's great and this one comes in about five four different designs maybe the crazy quilts all right Coming together, okie dokie dokie. Right, so Louise, in that bottom trolley over there, is there a roller with a sponge on it? Right in the very bottom bit. One of those, perfect. Thank you for being the perfect mind reader. Um, I love one of these rollers. For when it comes to putting paint on as well that can be really really handy so to tone all of this down because you know it's a lot going on here at the moment i'm going to use this massive big stencil which is great and i'm going to put a color over the top and i'm going to use a sponge roller to do this i think i bought this one from riot art and craft quite inexpensively you can buy them at kmart in the kids department you can buy them just about anywhere what color do i use to put over the top i don't know 
<laughs> you know what? I don't know. Let me have a think about this. I think that I'm going to put some turquoise over the top. So using my craft mat, I'm going to put out some turquoise paint. And so this is just the Dina Wakely turquoise. I'm now going to just spread it out a bit with my palette knife. You watch me put my elbow in that later. Um, and now I'm going to get my sponge and coat my sponge. Now I don't want to do my whole stent, the whole canvas, of course. I want to add highlights. So again, I've got to connect it to the edges. But This could have gone really bad, actually. I never really thought this through, but you know what? How bad could it go? If you don't like it, you can paint over it. Voila. Beautiful. So this has added a nice pop of turquoise to my project. And I'm like I said, starting on the edges make sure that it's connected and it's grounded and it's just giving it a lovely pop. Oh, so glad I had my nails done today. <laughs> totally paint everywhere. All right. I am even wearing an apron after getting paint on myself yesterday. All right, so that's toned it down, added a little bit of color, uh, a little bit of a, a lightness to it as well, and making it all work. Um, I'm going to also add some stamping and a few patterns. So I've got the Dina Wakely alphabet stencil, and I would like to use this one with white or mineral. Mineral is... A, a really nice Dina Wakely color that's kind of like a gray but not quite not quite a gray it's more of like a blue gray and I might even need a clean sponge for this one that'll do maybe no okay so I've used picked up a, a sponge here that has dried with paint on it and it's gone rock solid. So that's what you don't do. I'm going to use a makeup wedge. Is that one clean? Oh, look, that one's reasonably clean. Yes, let's use that. Making it work. Making it work with what you've got in front of you. That is the key. I know Gabby is watching, who does my nails, and I'm sure she's hating me about now. So what I want to do is I want to add these alphabets, and the Dina Wakely mask stencil puts up a nice, bold print. So the key to doing this, everything else has pretty much got lines. I've kept horizontal lines. I haven't gone to wishy-washy diagonal. I didn't want to do that. Um, I don't want it to be... I mean, it's a hot mess anyway, but it's more about making something visually pleasing. And it's not going to be the highlight. It's just going to pop into the background. Make this one a bit darker. And they don't say anything. They're just what we call, what, well, what does Dina Wakely call them? Um, asymmetric almost I know that's not the right terminology but you know you know what I mean popping into the background I think we just about need to put the air conditioner on in here today oh. Now, I may retract this statement about gifting it because I reckon this is going to look great up on my wall at the rate I'm going here. <laughs> I'm so funny. All right, and a bit more up here. We can take these letters. 
So you can see that these letters are toning it back, tying it all together. And it's kind of like a dusting of alphabet. Is that a thing? A dusting of alphabet. Oh, it, it now is a thing. I like that. Radio. Well, that's a lot. Hang on a minute. Baby white. Layer it up, tone it back. No, make it worse. Paper towel. Better. Okay. It's looking beautiful. Thank you for that. It looks better here than it does on camera, I suspect. It's a bit of a, it's working quite well. So the other advantage of working with acrylic paint is while the paint is still wet, I can get my wet baby wipe and where my B is quite bold, I can just do a little circle in there. My D is quite a bold color. My R up the top there is a bit bold and I can tone that back. But adding on that white has completely changed how it looks. All right, so I want to talk to you very quickly about the Scrap Effects, oh, scrap effects stamps that are available online um so these are foam stamps and when you grab these guys they are already on a acrylic piece so i don't want to use it as three items like that so i'm just going to do that and do that so now i have three stamps so I've got the little swirls, the pinwheel. Um, so there's that stamp available. This one is great because this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And it's actually called the Build a Flower Stamp. So you can see how amazing that could look as a flower, layering that all up. Uh, the other one that I've got out here that I was going to use is the frond or bobble stem bubble stem I think it's called um, but I just want to use this shape here because I quite like this shape I think this is quite nice so there's a couple of ways that I can use this I can use an ink pad and press it straight into here I could use a brayer or I can use it as a pick the stamp off of my mat here so what do we think we might do um, I think that I might use some acrylic paint and I'm not going to use black I'm going to use balmy night and I'm going to use night which are two colors that are very almost neutral just gonna wipe that back sorry guys don't break And what I want to do is a bit of that. And the balmy night, whoops, there's a lot of that. And I've got a brayer. So a brayer is a, a tool that will, a hard, a hard roller that will roll out the paint so that I can then take my stamp, press it into it, ruin my manicure, and stamp straight onto my canvas. And I can grab it and stamp straight onto there. So that is the, the fantastic advantage of using Scrap Effects stamps is that you can put 
paint on them. So I've got it connected in three, uh, in two spots on my project, and that's really important to make it visually pleasing. How do you clean it? Baby wipe. There's nothing a baby wipe can't do, which is really not great, I'm sure. So same thing again. I'm going to put some um, over here, and grab a little more. So they're already on an acrylic block. You don't need anything fancy, which I'm all up for that. And because it's acrylic paint, I can dull any edges with my finger while it is still wet and make that work. And I need to do, I can't just do that and that. I need to also put some, it has to happen in threes. Hey Julianne, welcome darling. You haven't missed anything darling, nothing as you can see. But you can go back and watch it later. And that is the really cool thing. So I was saying in my previous Facebook today, uh, Facebook Live, that I will be, at the end of the show, I will upload all of these to YouTube so that you will have them there permanently to watch. But you can scroll back up through and and re-watch these whenever you like. Share them with your friends, show them all of the cool things um, and get yourself a little free mini class. All right, so I'm just taking the excess paint off of that stencil. It hasn't damaged it in any way and it's stuck on that acrylic mat. So the other one that I wanted to use was this circle. So I'm gonna spread that out with my roller and I love this colour. And I was a little generous on the paint, do you think? For that little stamp? Yeah, me too. So now, because I'm putting on a single circle image, I now need to think about where it's going to go, about giving it some sort of design. Or I could just whack it on there and hope for the best. Let's go with that option. But they need to be connected. To each other and I've gone from dark through to light dark and I'm not adding any more color and of course you need to do things in odds and evens So I'm just getting up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bam. And I've connected them to the, the stamping I did earlier. Six, seven, eight, ooh, nine, even odd number. All right. Coolio. And it's exactly the same thing, just a damp baby wipe. Sorry, and I noticed you just can't see the bottom of that. Um, a damp baby wipe to take off any excess paint. Oh, see, that annoys me. I think it needs one here. I can look at it and see that it's not balanced. It's not quite sitting right, so... There we go. And knowing when to stop is really important and I think I should have stopped about three stamps ago, but that's all right. So done, simple, easy. Um, I need to wipe this up. So let's grab a piece of paper towel. Before I do that, I've got all this paint here on my brayer. And that's a lot of paint on my brayer. So take some off on my paper towel and then I can add way too much.
Why didn't one of yell at me? One of you yell at me and say, "Natalie, no, don't do it." Okay, there we go. There was more paint on that than I thought. Kind of puts a bit of a shadow over it. I was after a dirty brayer, not a brayer full of paint. So I really had way too much on there. Brayer bray is fantastic. It gives it a really, really clever effect and it takes almost no effort. So the cool thing is I just made a massive big mistake on my canvas in front of you guys. And as long as you fix it with a baby wipe, promptly you can you can correct those mistakes All right so always have bam baby wipes handy okay so this just needs a little bit of white to finish off and then i am thinking that it is done how do i finish it off i think it just needs a few splatters of white it doesn't need too much uh, I'm going to grab some white linen dilutions paint. Give it a good shake, make sure it's nice and fluid. And put it on my mat. Grab my not clean palette knife. I'm sure not everyone does this as well, that you just leave all your tools covered in paint and bits and pieces. That's where this catalyst tool comes in handy because you can leave the paint sit on there for three days and it will just come right off again. Unlike a paintbrush, if you leave that paint on that for three days, just throw it in the bin. <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to put my paint, my brush in water. Okay. So what I would like to do now is I need to add a little bit of a splatter on here and a little bit of a swipe of white. So using the back of my catalyst tool, I'm going to swipe it over my edges to start with and I'm gonna go super light. And if you're unsure about how it's going to work, try it on something else first. So. I've got my, my paint palette here. I can take a little excess off on that. And then just, there we go, that's what I'm after. I just wanna add a little bit of a swipe. And then I can pick some up with my catalyst tool. Why do I need the feel, why do I feel the need for white? I think it needs a pop of white. Like I was saying, Karen, white and black give dimension, right? So no matter what, I personally love the idea of adding a bit of a splatter of white and a splatter of black in a really small amount just to give it a little bit of dimension. Um, it makes a massive difference. It lightens it up when it can be a bit heavy and it, and it can just lift it. It just lifts it, black and white. So I haven't used black, but I've gone for a really, really dark navy blue and the white is not overpowering, but you can see that it's there. So I've got a bigger area up here, which I can just tone down with my finger, but it's still there. I've got a generous amount up here, and I've got a bit here. So it kind of sits in three spots around my page. You should be able to glance at it and see that it's balanced. Um, when white sits over the top of purples and pinks, they tend to go a little pink anyway. It loses its, uh, it's, it loses its whiteness. So it does tone down a bit until you do that. And you can take it off with a baby wipe in spots if you don't love it. So see how that just wiped right off? Perfect. Oh honey, you're never gonna get an insight into my creative mind, oh my gosh. Um, my creative mind is just a whole, it's like a bag of Skittles at the moment. Um, but it's surprising the things that just before too long become natural to you. Um, and you can look at it and go, oh, see, it needs a white for a lift. 
So instead of me getting a paintbrush and, and splattering dots on it, using the back of my palette knife has given me a really similar effect. Um, and going around the edges has worked really nicely as well. So it's gone from that hot mess that I started with to something that I don't want to part with now that I've promised it publicly to one of you guys. <laughs> so it makes all of the difference, that, that layering process, all right? So there you go. I'm not going to add any more to that. I'm just going to... Yep, hold it up and be happy with it. Um, because knowing when to stop, like I said, is important. Um, and I have to hold it up to look at it because I'm looking at it at an angle. Normally, I would be standing over the top to do something like this. And I've done numerous big canvases like this. Oh, Karen, are you talking to the screen, darling? Are we having a face-to-face -face combo here, love? <laughs> Good. Because of... <laughs> Um, Louise, she's just, Karen's just commented saying, oh my, I think I'm losing it. I'm talking to my screen as if I'm there. And that's okay because I'm talking to you like you're here as well. So don't worry about it, honey. You are not losing your marbles. This is a safe place. Um, so just to recap, what I have done is used a 14 inch plain canvas, which I have bought from, I don't even know where, and layered acrylic paint and stencils from the base up to get something that looks really really nice um, I am super happy with this and <laughs> um, Tony you crack me up um, I am super happy with this and absolutely love it so I'm just going to sign the front of it And then you are going, somebody, one of you is going to find this arrive in your order from this week. So um, I'm, I'm super grateful for you guys for supporting my little family business. And it's a truly a family business because Louise, who have you've heard me talk um, about over the last day or so, um, Louise is my sister and she has now started working for me on a more permanent basis. Um, because you guys have made me so freaking busy. So thank you for that, indeed. Um, so just to recap, stencils and stamps are on special 15% off between now and whenever I go to bed. Tomorrow is going to be a brand new special, and I'm not going to tell you what that is until tomorrow. And oh, I didn't need to stick my finger in that, did I? And I, uh, so you need to take advantage of the stamps and stencils because this is very possibly going to be the last online sale of the year. This is the last Great Australian Craft Show. And at this stage, I will not be having a, another online sale. Um, if you have already purchased from me this weekend and you would like to purchase again, don't forget about the no judgment postage because there is no judgment. Safe place, guys. Um, and we will be posting orders on Tuesday, uh, Monday and Tuesday. So you have plenty of time to um, build your order and create your, your happy crafty things as you go. So thank you very much. 15% off Christmas, anything Christmas, 15% off stamps and stencils today, 15% off <laughs> of all paper collections and dun, 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 something else as well. Um, but I'll pop some Christmas, yes, Christmas, buy the Christmas things. Um, but I'll put a photo of this up online now and, um, and the products that I used. So thanks, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, wash your hands, kiss your kids, snog your husband, and I will chat to you all soon.